Uh, welcome to another year of chemistry. Um, maybe you know us, maybe you don't. Um, maybe, would you introduce yourself? Yeah, for sure. Um, my name is Miss McKeon. Um, I I guess we should talk about what we did in high school. I feel like that's a good way to connect, yeah, right? Y'all are in high school. We were once in high school. A long yeah. time ago for one of us. Um, long enough. Okay. Um, so when I was in high school, I was a dancer. I was captain of my dance team. Um, and I believe there should be a photo popping up. Um, so I had to whistle us on and off the field. I did not just carry that whistle around for fun. Um, so that was a big thing I was a part of in, uh, in high school. I uh, also graduated from Texas A&M. Whoop. Um, oh dear. Think we'll be showing a photo of that as well in 2015 and have been a teacher ever since. Uh, let's introduce you right here. Mr. Dimitrovich, um, I'll, I'll go back to college because high school is just so far away. <laughs> um, fun fact, I played both basketball and soccer in college. Uh, you can see my back in this picture right here, but it was super fun. I uh, love playing. Wasn't the greatest, but uh, it was a lot of fun. Yeah, for sure. All right, well, this is our first video, so I feel like we should maybe start with uh, what what is chemistry? Or like, what are we doing? Yeah, so you're in a chemistry class, so probably the best thing to do is define what chemistry is. So what is chemistry? And by the way, you're, you're gonna have your packets, and this is where you probably jot these things down, particularly if Miss McKean is actually writing things on the board, that's yes. your cue that those things need to be put into your notes. So what is chemistry? Let's give a simple definition. Chemistry is the study of matter and the changes it undergoes. Okay, but pause on that. Um, what is matter if yeah. we're studying it, right? Yeah, so one of the super fun things that you probably have encountered your entire year is you have a teacher to find something and in that definition will have a word that we don't know what it means so that's not a super helpful def definition so let's talk about what matter is and the technical definition for matter is this it's anything that has mass okay so let's draw an arrow here to matter has mass got it and takes up space and takes up space okay well, wait a second um if i think about this right uh has mass means like I could I could like put it on a scale, right? Sure. Okay, takes up space. So so like w what about air? So uh, probably a better question to ask is like what things aren't made up of matter? Because we look around the okay. room, okay. we could probably point at anything, right? Like uh, block. We understand that it has mass, right? And it takes up space. No one's gonna argue that it doesn't take up space. For sure. So right. the majority, if you just randomly pointed around your room right now, you're gonna be like yeah. matter, matter, matter. It's gonna be a very fun game. Parents will probably think you're a little bit nuts. <laughs> but but probably the better question is like what she just asked. What about air? Like, does that have mass and does it take up space? Well, I guess if you think about blowing up a balloon, right? Um, it definitely does take up space because we can see it filling up, filling up the balloon. We will spare y'all from us blowing up a balloon on camera. Imagine it. Yeah, <laughs> just picture it. Um, so I guess that would pass. So air would be yes. Um, what about what about space though? Not about space, but how about mass? Well, I get, if I was designing a lab, I could take the balloon, I could put it on a scale, and then I could fill it up with air, and I could put it on a scale again, and you would see that the mass does change. Yeah, it, now it's yeah. not going to be like super heavy, right? right. But right. It, it, especially with the sensitive balances we have, we'd actually see that it has mass. Mm -hmm. For sure. What else? A um, little bit of a, a hot topic, uh, light. Yeah, that's a tricky one, because <laughs> if you look at light, you're not like, oh, I feel the heaviness of the, of the mass hitting me. But we now know this is truth. We know that everything around us acts both as a, a particle and a wave. We used to think that light and all forms of energy, fire, and all mm -hmm. that stuff yeah. was a wave. Now mm -hmm. we know that they both are made up of waves and particles, and that's the key thing, because if you have a particle, it's gonna have mass mm -hmm. and it's gonna take up space. Now, how little space? crazy yeah. crazy small right so the amount of matter that's in it we call those photons or quantums if you want to like impress your family with words on the mm. first day i know right really smart but yeah. there's no one that's going to be taking a photon and putting it on a scale and be like whoa no. um they're incredibly tiny but actually light and and, and energy they actually do have matter yeah. A subtle cross-curricular plug here. Physics gets to get pretty deep into some it of those is. things. We'll touch on it, but also all of you should maybe think about taking physics. Um, okay, so <laughs> that just like, that's just like super subtle. But, but come back to this definition. So right. we're going to say in chemistry, we're going to study matter. And have we mm -hmm. just essentially said everything's made up of matter? Okay, but wait, 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 wait. What about like, what about like feelings? Uh -oh. Like emotions? They don't, they don't, because those are things like you all have big ones sometimes. Um, I do big feelings and like you know emotions like those are real. Heavy. Yeah, and those are real, but 
they don't take up space. So maybe we would say those are not matter. I know. Uh, this is one of the joys of actually teaching with someone of the opposite gender. <laughs> Never had this before, but you're right. Uh, they, we could argue that there's some chemical reactions going for on. For sure, for sure. But the reality is if you take a look at pretty much everything, yeah. there's everything's made up of matter. Uh, unless you go get all technical, like what about a vacuum? Well, oh, okay. Like outer space. Vacuum by definition, no matter, right? So it's the opposite of matter. So the reality is, is that if we say that we're going to study matter, isn't matter everything? Okay, but that kind of makes me feel a little overwhelmed if, that, if you just said it's everything and that's the whole class. Yeah, so in case you're feeling overwhelmed with that. I'm feeling overwhelmed. If we study matter, everything, but then we're like, no, 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 that's not enough. Let's also study all the changes it undergoes. I'm having a panic attack. Yeah as we're reading this. So the nice thing about what we're talking about now is we're going to be essentially doing something called inorganic chemistry. There's yeah. a, it's a tons and tons of branches of chemistry because if you're going to study everything, you have to have a bunch of branches. We're going to spare you all of that. And we're essentially going to talk about things that aren't living particles and how right. they interact with each other. So kind of a definition, you see that you're written on the board, it's something we are going to move forward uh, learning. Now I do think will make you feel better. At least it makes me feel better. Um, is that we're going to keep things really organized. So each unit's going to kind of pinpoint us in a certain direction and they're all going to build on each other. So we're going to make this kind of bite-sized, how do you use an elephant kind of vibe. So I think what is a good place to start, or where is a good place to start, is, okay, so we have matter. Can we kind of organize it in a certain way? And so I think we should start with the states. Yeah, and, and here's a, the delightful part. If you've taken any level of science from itty-bitty mm -hmm. baking soda and vinegar uh, reactions up to the higher science you've taken, probably biology at this point, you will know there's three states of matter, right? right? Solid, liquids, and gases. And the other thing is you probably know what they are like. Mm -hmm. So if you take a solid, you want to give the definition for a solid. So how we're going to classify a solid, because you can get a little, you, you think you all know what a solid is, and then you encounter something that feels like it doesn't quite, it's not a liquid, but it's not a solid. So we're going to go off of these kind of um, defining characteristics kind of rigid here. Yeah. So in order for it to be classified as a solid, we're going to look at the shape and we're going to define it as a definite, or I can sometimes use the term fixed, right? Uh, shape, all right? Now, that's easy to see. That means it always has the same shape no matter where it's located, mm -hmm. right? So I could put it on the floor, I could put it in a bowl, I could put it outside, I could put it on the table, and it's going to maintain um, that same shape no matter what, right? Um, it also is going to have a definite or fixed, again, you can use either one, volume, right? So um, that kind of seems obvious if it doesn't change its shape, right? That obviously it would also have the same volume, but same rules apply. So if I put this block on the table. So let's take a look. Yeah. yeah. If I put this here, okay, and I took the volume, it's going to have the same volume if I put it in the sink or if I put it on the floor. Or, or juggled I, it. Oh, gosh. If I juggled it, I don't think this counts. <laughs> so well, really, solids, they have constant or definite yes. shape. They're not going to morph. If you see these right now and they're morphing, you probably have been into something you shouldn't have been yes, into, agreed. correct? Yes. Um, and they have fixed volume. By the way, another word for volume, we sometimes say is the amount of space something occupies. Okay. So volume. if you're like volume is a tricky word, it's the amount of space something occupies. Space it occupies. So okay, cool. clearly, Definite, nothing changes with the shape or the amount of space it's taking up. How about a liquid? So here we get into our kind of difference here, how you can compare liquids and solids, is that it does not have a definite or fixed shape. So as you can kind of imagine, or I guess we could show it, um, if you have a liquid and you uh, put the liquid in a different place, um, this is, uh, we'll see how messy this gets, right? You can see it kind of, it's the shape is like the shape of the beaker. But if I pour this, um, actually, I don't even know if y'all can see that. I'm gonna do this one instead. So this is dangerous. Um, good thing this is water. Uh, so if I pour it here, you can see that now the liquid is much skinnier and uh, much more um, the shape of this container. So that means that it doesn't have a fixed shape. If I pour it on the floor, it would spread out like the floor. Yeah, right? so we know that the amount of space it's occupying, if I have it here or if I just, like it would be fun to do, but I don't want to clean this up. I agree. Hey, what, yeah. It's your room though, right? But 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 also remember, I don't uh, know if they can see the edge of that. that so I think so if you if I fill this anywhere, if I pour this out, the amount of space it's occupying in the sink is the same amount of space as it had in here. So definitely it, it has the same amount of space, but the shape can change pretty dramatically. Now, one thing that is the same between solids and liquids is the amount of liquid you have is gonna remain the same. Right? That's so true. even if I poured that water on the ground or if I put it in the sink or if I put it in a different container, um, if I had poured all of it into a different container, it's gonna stay the same volume. The amount of water you have like in milliliters will stay the same. 
One of the things we love doing is we define something in chemistry and then we take something else and we're like, well, it's not that. And so I think we've gotten to that point in our program yes. right here where we can take a look at gas. And if we say that solids and uh, solids have definite shape, definite volume, and liquids have not definite shape and, and definite volume, this is a not and a not. So if we're looking at that, um, why don't you uh, uh, demonstrate to us uh, some gas? Oh, okay. Uh, demonstrate. Demonstrate so, is a strong. Is a strong. So let me let me let me get some. <laughs> grab some gas here. <laughs> so, if you, so if you're grabbing it in here, the reality is you can manipulate it in your hands. For sure. Whoa. I can I can squeeze my hand even. You Tighter. know I could go and I. Yeah. There's no definite shape. Right. And if we let this gas go, it's going to go anywhere, anywhere that we want in this entire room. So gases are kind of tricky that way. Yes. So main things that I like to look at when I'm comparing the, the states is that gases and solids have nothing alike, nothing in common, right? No fixed, no definite, fixed and definite. And then liquids are like our little friend in between. So they have one thing that's similar to a solid, one thing that's similar to a gas. If that kind of helps you kind of classify them. Yeah. All right, so now that we've talked about the three different states of matter, you're gonna learn this about us in, in science. We love to yes. categorize things. Yes. You have a specialty, like you were really good. Yeah. I've already worked with her for a little bit, <laughs> uh, seeing how we categorize things in different, th in different categories. We're gonna do that right now with matter, and matter can broadly be broken into two separate groups, intensive properties and extensive properties. Right. So for intensive properties, we say this, the amount doesn't matter. So what you need to think about is like when we talk about matter, we want to describe it in certain ways that are relevant to what we're doing, right? And that's going to get way deeper as we go further into chemistry, like how things might bond with one another or how things change in a reaction. So we classify these things in those two. But there are some things that are going to be important to note that it's only true for this amount. And then there are other things that no matter how much you have, it doesn't change. That's what we're doing, yep. right? So amount does not does not matter. And by the property of say, defining something and then defining something is different, <laughs> yeah. if intensive, the amount of matter doesn't matter, then extensive means that the amount of matter does matter. And we do recognize that matter, 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 matter. Yeah, it's, it's kind a of, lot of words. Yeah. <laughs> so let's talk about um, extensive properties first. Okay. So the amount of matter does matter. So let's just say, all right, I wanted to get your weight because it's probably not going to be offensive because you're, you're not overweight like I am. Oh, good. Okay. <laughs> so if I were like, hey, I want to get her weight, but here's what I'm going to do. I'm just going to take some sort of cutting tool, machete, chainsaw, oh. uh, other things, and I would just go, Hunk! and I took her hand, I'm like, this is Miss McKeon. And I put that on a scale, and I'm like, she weighs three pounds, 3.2 pounds. How flattering. It'd be super yeah, flattering, super right? Crazy. The very intensive, yes. newest paleo diet, clearly, right? But would that be really accurate? No, because when we're measuring things like the amount of mass someone has, the amount that we put on a scale, the amount we have really does matter. Right, yeah? does. Now, conversely, if I were to take this delightful orange piece of paper, would we all agree this is an orange piece of paper? I, I would say orange. Okay, now yep. watch. This is an orange piece of paper. When I do this, Ooh. I know, <laughs> Wee! I don't feel like there should be a flourish of yeah. some kind. Uh, now it's a completely different color. No. No would no. be the correct answer for yeah. that because anyone that can see be like, wait a second, that's still orange. Yes. So here's the thing, it, it's orange. We all know, we all have our feelings about orange. How about green? Green, it's such a science color. Yeah, I know, yeah. green, if I take the green and now I'm gonna. Oh, a bigger piece, green. Also green, right? Yep. So this border on the silly, but the reality is, is that it doesn't matter how much green I have, it's just green. But. Would the masses be? Yeah, so if I were to say, hey, I want to measure the mass of the paper, I'm not going to take this and be like, Whoosh. I'll put this on the scale. Because yes. much like chopping off her hand, which again, we're not going to do, yeah, please that would fall into the extensive category. So in reality, um, the two main categories, matter matters and matter doesn't matter, is we have a few examples we want to give you. Color is really one of them. Yeah. The other one is like boiling point and melting point. So if I were to oh, take yeah. this right here, this amount of water, right? Or I would take a swimming pool full of water barring chlorine and other stuff that's in there. Do you realize that water in our world, now that we're in metric system land, it's gonna boil at about 100 degrees Celsius. So yeah. if I take this or a thimble, because who doesn't use a thimble nowadays, right? Sure. right? Yeah. That amount of water will always boil at 100 degrees. Similarly, the density, the mm. density of this water. So density is how much mass there is per volume. 
So if I were to take this amount of water or, or the ocean full of water, the, mm -hmm. the density is going to be the same. Um, what other things can you think of that might be under intensive? Um, so if we're thinking a little bit ahead and thinking about maybe some types of ways we can uh, create some mixtures, maybe like uh, the solubility, like if something will dissolve in uh, something yeah, else. That's good. So yeah, yeah. Uh, salt will always dissolve the same amount right. in water as something else will. How about extensive? What other characteristics can we think of? Um, if we're thinking along the same lines, I don't know, we do this sometimes in chemistry, I would say again, a little more physics E, but uh, the length of something, yeah. right? Um, obviously, if I took the length of this side of the paper, it's now very different than the length of this one, That's right? That's true. Yeah, so the length... Um, Mass, size, volume, length. I mean, anything that you can think of that, that you're like, describe something and the amount of that thing matters, we've dealt with extensive and intensive. Right. So, I feel like we're on the verge of going overload with this stuff, but here's the, here's the takeaway here. We like to divide things into different topics, right? Into different categories. And so intensive versus extensive, that's when we should be able to give you any characteristic go, hmm. can, can the amount of matter make a difference? Mm -hmm. And then we, I feel like we should really know the different uh, uh, states of matter. And then finally at the beginning, didn't we just talk about what chemistry is? She wrote it on the board, which means that you're gonna need to know it. Right. And this is part of the stuff that you're gonna be putting in your notes. Um, we really are looking forward to this year. Yeah. We're looking forward to having more of these videos. If you happen to see some of the videos where both of us are not in it, we're in a transition stay here, but hopefully we'll have those all out uh, in a little bit. But thank you so much for being with us. We look forward to seeing you again. Take your notes. Indeed. See you later. <laughs> Bye.